Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter, and today I'm going to show you how to sublimate from beginning to end. Um, actually, from the very beginning, from buying the actual file, and then customizing it, printing it, and then we're going to actually press it. So, all right, I uh, if you, before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I totally appreciate all the support that I can get. Okay, so let's get started. This little bag I've already done. I did it on Pin TV. if you haven't seen it, but... The reason why I love this bag, and you can see the file is there on the screen, this is super vibrant and beautiful and lots of details. It would be so difficult to replicate this in HTV, so in heat transfer vinyl, otherwise known as iron on vinyl. Uh, basically, if you try to do that without a sublimation printer or without doing a printable iron on, um, every color that you see you would need to cut out and you would need to press it would be so difficult especially the egg and all those colors so I um, so I bought this design but my problem is that um, I don't know any babies so there's no one that is celebrating their first Easter but I like this enough and what I noticed was in this file even though it's just a PNG. So if it was an SVG file, it would have been a lot easier. But I didn't see any SVG files uh, where I can make edits to it. So I bought this file and I noticed that the Y and the F kind of cuts down into the into the Easter, right? Um, but everything else I felt like I could erase. So I was willing to give it a try and let me show you what I did. Because <laughs> I am not a good designer and so I get it. Not everyone can we can't all be perfect, right? <laughs> and I am definitely not perfect. But um, my weakness is definitely designing, like from scratch. I can, um, I'm really good at workarounds, I think. And, uh, you know, I make it happen. And so let me show you what this looks like. So I ended up doing this. And let's go to customize. And I got it to look pretty darn good, I think. So let's see what this file looks like so i got rid of the uh, my first right and then if you remember there were issues with the s and the t because that's where the the y from my and the f dipped down okay so this now looks like something that we would have bought right like it's cutesy it's got little things in it let's start from the beginning okay so let me um make this smaller and i'm just gonna move this out of the way for now all right what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to upload so we're gonna upload that image and so you've downloaded your file and now we're gonna go to upload it and it is where is my file? my first easter okay so when i'm in here i'm gonna go to complex and i'm gonna continue so what we're doing right now is we're basically erasing the my first okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the erase and you can see this is how big the size of your eraser is going to be so it's the size of that circle so i'm going to make it bigger and you see my circle got bigger and then i'm going to make it even bigger okay so i'm going to go in and i'm just clicking here getting rid of and you might be wondering why I didn't click on select because let me show you what that looks like because I've already done this and I know it didn't work. <laughs> so when you select normally, um, it depends on the image, but sometimes when you click on select, all of the pink disappears, right? But in this case, you still get an outline. You still need to go and, um, and still erase. So I just started with erase, but then I realized you don't know why I did that. So let me show you. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in and that works so much better, right? And I will go back to there. Let's see, we can make this bigger. And this gives us a chance to like really get in there and make it a lot better, okay. And we can do two things. We can make our circle smaller and the image bigger, and that'll make it easier. Um, but let's scroll over here and let's just get all of this. All right, let's see. Do we get everything? I think we got everything. All right, let's look at this. Let's make our circle smaller so that we can get, you know, the details. Now, I'm just gonna find something to cover that. So I'm not too worried about getting all of it, 
but since I'm here, since we're here, I'm gonna do that. Okay, I'm gonna apply and continue. And now this is what it looks like. Not bad, right? So I'm gonna click on this. I want it as a print then cut image, um, my first Easter, and let's go and upload it. Now, if this was an SVG file, what you could do is you can easily go in there. It would be layered and you can change colors. You can make the eggs brighter, lighter, whatever it is that you want. In this case, it's a PNG, so there's nothing that we can do about it. But let's make this just a little bit smaller for the time being. Now, the other thing is, because I'm doing this in design space, had I loved the whole, the whole image, I would have just printed it out. And I would have bypassed design space because I'm gonna use my sublimation printer. I'm gonna print on sublimation paper using sublimation ink with my sublimation printer. And there's nothing to cut, right? Cause it's gonna print on the white and then I'm just gonna press the whole thing. But because I knew I was gonna make some changes to it and add some images, I am um, limited by the print then cut um, parameters. So in this case, when I'm looking at this file, I see that this top half, I can easily separate it so that I can make that as big as I want and the bottom as big, big as I want. And I can easily then mash it back up when I go to press. So what I mean by that is now I'm gonna slice this apart, okay? So I'm going to bring in a square and I'm gonna unlock it and I'm gonna make sure that it fits everything. Okay, so I'm gonna make this even smaller so we can see the screen real quick. All right, so you can see everything above the Easter is in this rectangle. So I'm gonna grab these two items and I'm gonna slice. So I'm basically separating I'm going to remove all my slice results, okay? I'm basically separating the top from the bottom because now I can make this a lot bigger. My drawstring bag is way bigger than eight and a half by 11. So if I was restricted by the print then cut parameters, then my whole image would be a lot smaller. But in this case, I can make both things bigger. So what I want to do too is the carrot's kind of off by itself. I'm going to just bring in a circle and I'm going to remove this carrot. So now I'm going to be, this image is now going to be three separate items. So I'm going to remove this, remove this. Okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. Here we go. So I've got my bunny ears, I've got my carrot, and I can keep my carrot here or I can move my carrot down, it doesn't matter. But this is, you know, this looks pretty good as is, right? But now to um, cover up where I couldn't get rid of that Y and the F, we're gonna go into images and we're just gonna find cutesy, I'm gonna do a cutesy chick. I don't know if I needed to put cutesy, but oh, look at that. <laughs> That's cute. Um, oh no, this one's cute too. Let me see. I'm gonna add to canvas. Oh no, and I added a bunny. So let's go to images and look up bunny. It would help if I spelled it correctly. <laughs> okay, so let's look at a bunny that kind of matches that cute little chick. And I used this one the first time around, so I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna add it here and I'm gonna make it small. To see how small this little chick is, I'm gonna maybe make it like that small. Let's see. And this little guy, I'm gonna do this guy because he's, this little guy is kind of like similar to this one. So I am gonna remove him even though he's so cute. And I'm gonna do this. I'll plop him right on top of the T. And then we can even add one more thing over here if we wanted to. So we're skipping the A and the E. Uh, we could put a little Easter egg. So let's go to images and do Easter egg. And I'm gonna try to find one that matches. Oh my God, how cute is that? That's ridiculous. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. <laughs> Add to canvas, it's too stinking cute. Okay, we're gonna make it small to match these little guys over here. 
and I'm just going to move it over here and not make it so straight. Kind of looks like it belongs in the image, right? Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're going to grab these items and you're going to flatten and see how it changes. Isn't that cute? And now you can't tell that we even made any changes to this file. We can move this down a little bit more. We can put this down a little bit more like that and we're ready to cut it. So let's look at how big this is. This is pretty big. Whoops. Hold on. Okay, it's 11.7 by 16.95. That's way bigger than my bag. So let's see. Uh, so first of all, what do we need to do? Um, okay, some of these things are too big. Yeah, way too big. All right, so let's make this a little bit smaller. Um, let's see. That's still way too big, right? So we're gonna make this smaller. Okay, so now we've got this portion, which is 6.73 by 5.79, and then we've got this one eight inches, basically by six inches. So together, it's huge, right? Together, it's eight inches by 11.61. That's, I mean, bigger than your piece of paper. <laughs> eight and a half by 11, yeah, a little. <laughs> so, um, but we can cut this, right? And then we can press it. So I wanted to show you how to do that, how easily it is to basically add more things and flatten it and then, you know, make that more of your image. So I love this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get rid of this one so that we don't get confused with it. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to make it so I can show you what that looks like. So we're gonna need to cut this in two, onto two sheets of paper, okay? When you hit continue, and you send it to the printer, what you wanna do is in this case, because the Cricut's not cutting it at all for you, you do not wanna add bleed. Um, you, because you don't need the border, you don't need an, a, a little bit more of everything for it to cut. So we're basically, we're going to print this. I'm gonna send it to, I have a sawgrass, I'm gonna send it to my print manager if you have a sawgrass, or if you don't have a sawgrass, let me explain to you why you send it to the print manager. So sawgrass is a print manager that acts in between what your computer, what you send to the printer, and then this print manager will then talk to the printer, which will talk to my sawgrass printer. But there's a couple things within sawgrass print manager that helps you with your projects. Different materials, different blanks, will need different amounts of ink. So when you're in Print Manager, you can actually determine, like um, uh, decide what blank you're using, whether it's polyester, it's on ceramic, it's on a, um, I don't know what all my options are. You know what, let's send it so that you can see it, okay? So I'm going to send this without the bleed. Um, actually, I'm gonna send it with the bleed for a second, okay? And what I want you to take notice is this A. See how there's like that little, um, that little white space, empty space, right? Because the A has that empty space. So I'm gonna go to print, and I'm gonna show you what that print manager looks like. So it's gonna pop up, and okay, so in my print manager, because I added the bleed, okay, do you see how that white space um, it disappears because there's a bleed. It, it went over the actual image so that if the Cricut were to cut it, you wouldn't see any white space um, when it goes to cut, like if it didn't cut exactly on there. So like this brown, there's an extra, it's extra thick because when the Cricut goes to cut it and it doesn't cut exactly on the brown, the thin brown line of the original footprint, then you would see white space and you don't want that. So that's what the bleed does. So you, in this case, because the Cricut's not printing, we want it to print exactly the way it's designed. So when we go here um, and send to printer, I'm gonna remove the bleed because I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. And we're gonna go to print. And I'm also gonna show you, because I didn't show you before, the substrate. That's where you pick which blank you're putting it on. So see how the foot is a little bit thinner and then the A, you can see that blank space for that middle part of the A. So that's gonna be really important. It's very rare, I would I'd say, uh, when you don't put your bleed on. Because when you're making stickers and stuff, you want your bleed on. Um, okay, so this gives you all the different blanks. And like I said, 
different blanks uh, take on different amounts of ink. We may not be able to see it, it's not visible to the eye, but there are different amounts of ink being put onto the paper. So that's pretty cool, right? All right, um, so anyway, that's just one of the features of Print Manager, and then you go to print. All right, so let's exit out of that because I've already printed this thing. So now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna flip the camera, and I don't even have this one on yet. All right, so we're gonna flip the camera. It's gonna look crazy messy for a second. <laughs> so you're gonna have to ignore that. Okay, here we go. And, oops, let me move this in. Okay, so let me move this. Oh, you can really see everything. <laughs> All right, let me move this out of the way. My coffee from this morning. Hopefully it's not gonna spill. Okay, so I've got most of the stuff that I need out here. Let me, what? <laughs> All right, and then let me add my little face back. Okay, so a couple things that I've learned. So this is the, this is the bag that we're doing. And let me move it out of the way. And actually, I'm going to turn this down a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Ah, oh, that's actually better, right? Okay. So, I mean, look at all the colors that you get and all the details. It'd be, like I said, it would be so difficult to do this um, if you were cutting each one of these layers out. So let me show you what it looks like. Now, a couple of things. So this is what it looks like when it's fully printed if you didn't make any adjustments there's the my first easter right it's backwards because we're gonna when you press um for sublimation you always want to mirror it because you want your ink to be on to the blank so it's going to be uh, mirrored okay so this is the one that i pressed yesterday i mean it's pretty cute right and look how much bigger it is um, in comparison to if we had it all as one piece it would have been much, much smaller on this little bag, but instead I was able to make it pretty big, right? So when you're looking, and this is general, whether you're sublimating or you know, you're doing a, anytime that you're using print then cut, if there are breaks in your image, you can always slice it so that that just gives you the option of making everything bigger. It will be in pieces, but sometimes you can make that choice and decide whether or not that's a you know a good option for you okay so I've got my two pieces and I'm going to press these two again I'm making two Easter bags okay I'm going to turn on my heat press so give me one second okay so my heat press is turning on now one of the things that we learned yesterday so I was on pin tv I was on with Meg Megan I'm gonna turn that, there we go. And Megan is my sublimation expert. She's my go-to person. She used to work for Sawgrass. She now works for Craft Express. She knows everything about sublimation that there is to know. And it's so funny, I've watched so many sublimation videos. I've done quite a bit of sublimation and yet I had never heard of a foam kit. So apparently, and I'm so glad that, you know, we did this yesterday. I would have never noticed it, but I don't know if you can actually see it on here. It's slight, but the paper, you can kind of see where, um, you can kind of see where the, the edges of the paper landed. So when I put this down, there's just a little outline of this white. So a couple of things. I don't have a foam kit yet because I just learned about this yesterday. Um, but basically when I say a foam kit, it's literally just foam. And what you would do is you would, trim the foam so that there's there's a layer in between and so the foam kind of pops up like this so that the paper doesn't get imprinted the edges don't get imprinted to your blank now when you don't have a foam kit just a roll of foam from joann's is where i'm going to go get it from what megan recommended is instead of trimming this because this is the black uh, registration marks from design space i was just going to trim it anyway the black is um it is sublimation ink so it would show up so i do need to get rid of it but what megan told me is when you rip the paper 
see how it's ripping like this? Um, it actually makes the paper uh, less obvious, I guess, um, you know, because it's kind of trimmed down and the different layers get kind of torn out. So it doesn't make quite the impression onto your blank. So this is my first time doing this. Um, this is what I love about learning from others um, and having that option of, you know, going live with Megan on Pin TV and learning these things from her. So um, that has a little black right there. So I'm going to go back, but I'm carefully ripping this because I also don't want to, knowing my luck, um, I don't want to rip off the, the colored, like my actual image. So I'm going to be careful as I'm doing that. And I'm going to continue to tear this, which I just think is hilarious. Like I just had no, I, I, I cut my image so quickly yesterday that she didn't get a chance to tell me to do this. Um, but I mean, just stuff like this. How would you know? <laughs> there is no manual that tells you to do that. So, um, all right. I just want to make sure though that this, because this black is going to be so obvious and it is sublimation ink. So I definitely don't want any of that black on my thing. I'm going to now go closer to my project and let's see if that's going to, I am so curious and I don't know if you'll be able, oh, I did it. <laughs> It's okay, I'm gonna go this way and I think I'll be fine. All right, let me make sure I take that. Okay, so that's good. Let's do this top portion. And let me know in comments if, you know, like what you think or what you want me to experiment and test out. So. Um, I, like I said, I am going to go and get a foam kit because now that she pointed it out, and I don't know where these dots came from. I didn't have it in my first one, but I'm just going to, I'm going to cut really closely to that. Okay. And I'm going to try to get closer to this. And I'm actually going to take scissors to trim that because that's going to drive me crazy. So let's get out a small pair of scissors and I'm just going to cut right there. Okay. So we've got our pieces and oops. okay I'm just waiting for it to heat up so while it's heating up I'm gonna move all this out I'm gonna get my new blank because we've already pressed on that um, it is, let me get rid of all of this. And while you're here, I will be joining Angie Holden's Sublimation Camp and Corey, Corey George. So um, once I get all the details, I'll send it over to you. There will be a link uh, specifically for, for everyone that follows me. So um, I will let you know, but that's going to be a lot of fun too. I'm super excited to be joining the sublimation camp for the first time. So, all right, let's get ready for this. Let me go pull my big mat. This is a giant mat. So... With sublimation ink, basically how that works is when the heat is on here, we're basically turning the ink from a uh, liquid form, I guess, or I guess it, it's printed, um, but we're turning it into a gas. And so because it's flat, the gas can escape, which is why you don't want to stain anything. So you want to make sure that you protect your mat and your heat press. So I am going to put down 
my siliconized sheet. This is great. So this is actually from Artispree. Um, this paper is amazing. And so I use it for all my, all my pressing for sublimation. So I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna then put the bag down. And this bag is so cute. Okay, here we go. Oops, I'm going to move these out of the way. And it's beeping to tell me it's ready to go. I'm not ready yet. So I'm gonna put down the Easter, the ear, and I'm gonna tape it down. I don't want this to move. I hear you. <laughs> All right, so let's put this down. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this down so that no ink will get onto my press, okay? Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to put light pressure on both sides, make sure it's even and wait for it to press. So this is from Craft Express as well. The blank and the heat press is from Craft Express. And um, I love their blanks. They're a lot of fun. So they have different blanks than I've seen. This bag is super cute. It's a, um, it's a shimmer bag. So it's got like, it looks like it has glitter on it, but it's all, you know, a nice a finish. And um, the heat presses are great, but the blanks are so much fun. There's frosted, I'm gonna turn this off. turn it off there's um some of my favorite ones are the sequins bag and the sequins makeup bag where you can you know flip over um the frosted anything frosted is super cute okay so i'm gonna pull this up you know what you don't see the edges okay so I'm gonna show you the difference because I can see the marks on here. So it's gonna be difficult. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna point it out, okay? So right here, there is a paper marking. In fact, I could probably trace it almost all the way around, but I can't see it above here, but I can see the paper edge right here. And on this one, I can't see it at all. So darn it, <laughs> it really works. So when you're trimming it, you wanna just tear your paper. I, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you don't see it at all, but <laughs> things we learn, right? I love it. So anyway, I hope this was, um, this was helpful um, in how to, you know, kind of edit the files a little bit. You know, it's it's difficult. I can't design from scratch, but I can. I like to, you know, pull from pieces here and there and make it work. So while it's not, it was nobody's first Easter. <laughs> this is going to turn into an Easter egg hunting ba um, bag. So you can wear it as a backpack, and then you can take it out, and you can tie it, and you can add your eggs in there. I just think it's so stinking cute. Just a different version um, of the bag, and then they can go have fun with it afterwards. All right, well, thank you so much for joining. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. I will see you guys next time. Bye.